My name is Diane Sikapotonu. I work as an Associate Professor at the University of Otago in Wellington, based in New Zealand. Uh, and I'm also the Associate Dean Pacific, as well as an Immunology Scientist. I was in New Zealand uh, when COVID happened. So uh, when the news uh, started to come through, I was uh, uh, in New Zealand uh, at the time and was there during the uh, COVID response and also through the lockdown periods as part of that. So I first heard about COVID uh, through the international media reports that were coming through from different countries. So uh, so we all uh, were watching and, and listening, of course, uh, and uh, it, it was a bit of a worrying time for everyone. And, and of course, uh, in New Zealand, even though we're, uh, we're further away uh, than um, for many others who are here at the conference um, from the US, uh, it, it was still um, concerning for us. Well, it was such a, a serious issue. And again, it was one that a lot of people were worried about at the time. And and of course, as a scientist, um, I and, and many, many others were looking to see how we might be useful uh, in response to what was going on. And as I'd mentioned before, in our country, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, we mounted a very strong and early response uh, to the, the global pandemic. And so uh, what this also um, uh, meant was that we had opportunities uh, to us as scientists to be able to contribute to the dissemination of information around uh, the virus, the vaccine, uh, when it had become available and also about what this would mean for people. So uh, so there were things that we were trying to do in New Zealand, uh, but we were also keeping a very close eye on what was happening elsewhere in the world and contributing when and where possible. Um, I had opportunities, uh, as well as others, to contribute to work in the Pacific region, so just outside of New Zealand, in order to try and again help people understand more about the virus, about the vaccine and about what this uh, would mean for them. So, so there was a lot of work to be done and just acknowledging that there were many others who were looking to use their skills as scientists, um, as um, in, in other areas as well, in order to try and be as helpful as possible. So as part of the COVID response, I think it was also important to remember that there was a need to focus on building trust and reducing barriers. Uh, there are many in society for whom trust has been lost in some way and that was that was important uh, to bear in mind with the, for example, vaccination rollout, uh, the various associated activities, but also uh, with um, connecting uh, with people to share and ensure that there was good information available uh, for people about the situation, i.e. about the vaccine, about the virus, and about what people uh, would be forward uh, need to do. My research was significantly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic in that everything just slowed down. Um, there were times where we couldn't get anything done. Uh, so in other words, uh, the, the COVID-19 situation um, heavily impacted on many of us who were trying to progress research work uh, at the time. And, and uh, to date, uh, there's still been a, a legacy or ongoing impact of, of, of COVID-19. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, a significant um, impact on our students across the board involved a sense of frustration uh, with the delays, etc., and not being able to get things done as quickly as possible, not having um, a uh, personal contact with, with people that they might need to seek advice, help, from, for example. I think also there may uh, well have been a very strong sense of isolation, uh, as there was, you know, for many people at the time, but certainly for my students, th those were two major challenges. I've observed and experienced through the pandemic that there was an increased demand and interest in immunology as across the board. Um, so all of a sudden uh, people wanted to talk to us, people wanted to hear from us and so again uh, we had opportunities in New Zealand to be able to communicate uh, with people, to be able to connect and collaborate in, in ways that were 
as a result of the, the unfolding situation at the time, I think it's fair to say there was a lot that was unknown right at the start of the, the, the pandemic, or the outbreak rather. And so people were wanting answers and, and people were also quite worried at the time. And so as people with um, immunology backgrounds there and, and with scientific backgrounds and medical backgrounds, there were uh, opportunities there to connect and engage with, with the general public, but also with our peers um, in order to try and help support uh, with, with the COVID response across the board. Science communication involves people and good science communication involves connecting well with people and for me it's the people part that gives the meaning and importance to the work that we all seek to do together.